Welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a casted game of Age of Empires 4, and we've got Corvinus versus a Vortex for you guys today. A crazy, crazy matchup with two of the civilizations that have brand new units. The Delhi with the Ghazi Raider, and the Mongols with the Kashuk. That's right, two civilizations, two brand new units. We're going to have to see... If we've got a, a bit of a, you know, cavalry on cavalry fight here in the, the Feudal Age. Because both of these brand new units are available in the Feudal Age. Which is pretty bonkers. We're on the map Marshlands as well. Which means we will see the, the old wild man monster crackhead again. That gives out the, uh, the substances to the villagers to make them work a little bit faster. But let's introduce the players because we've got Corvinus spawning in. On the left hand side, or sort of towards the north here. He's going to be playing as the Delhi in the color yellow. And we see he's going to be opening up with the mosque and the mill onto the berries, grabbing himself a wheelbarrow and all of those nice upgrades. Whereas Vortex spawns in on the south, playing as the Mongols in the color blue. Opens up with a, a nice Uvu. A really, really nice spawn from here, in fact. This is, this is a god tier spawn. Not only do you get the Uvu, you also get the gold. And you get your TC next to this wood line. So really, really nice spawn here for Vortex. He's got to be feeling very, very happy about that. But have a look at this. Vortex is going to be opening up with a tower rush here, it seems. So interestingly, neither player moving out for any of the fish in the middle. Something that I think Vortex... And to be honest, both players can do, right? Because Corvinus, he's opened up here with a mill in the base on the berries. Now, this is nice for the Delhi because, well, they get the, the berry bonus, right? But shoreline fish is still a better food source. So you could move out here with your mill, grab yourself wheelbarrow in that mill. As that, that's kind of the reason why Delhi opened up with the mill onto the berries instead of the sheep. So instead of putting it here, why not put it out here and gather from some of the fish? And the same with the Mongols, because you've got the gur. You can move it out here, place it down. You can always then pack it up and move it back home if needed. But I think for Vortex, it, it, it makes a little bit more sense as to why he's staying at home. Because he wants to just gather the food as quickly as possible. Because there is a bit of idle time, you know, walking to the ponds. And for the Mongols here, you want to try to get up this barracks and your spearmen as quickly as possible. As we can see, he's already moving out now with those three spears. With the one of Villager looking to put pressure onto Corvinus here. Corvinus luckily does have the behind the base gold. We see it's pretty much the opposite side of where Vortex is coming from. Has he actually scouted out Corvinus? No, he hasn't. He hasn't scouted out anything, in fact. And we see Corvinus already aging up. So I, I don't think this tower is going to be able to achieve too much here. Corvinus, you know, he doesn't really care too much about his stone. And we see that Khan is going to be taking a little bit of town center fire. I, I guess Vortex can look to tower the, the berries and maybe the wood line and some of the berries. We see there's a lot of berries on this map, which is why the Delhi's a, a nice pick here. And there's there's the outpost. That looks a little bit close to the town center here. Uh, no, it's just out of radius. But honestly, I, I think Corvinus could just think about pulling the bills here. But if Vortex can get this up, I think it's in a decent spot. Because you're going to be denying away the gold and the berries. Corvinus is more than happy to move back onto the sheep. But gold's the kind of the bigger issue. But then, you know, you're playing up against the... You know, you're playing as the Delhi, right? You don't need a lot of gold. All of your upgrades, they're free. You, you don't need any gold for any units in the Feudal Age. The only reason you need gold is for Scholars. And we see Corvinus here has enough gold in the bank for another one. So honestly, I think he's all right. He's going to be able to get some units out. He's going up with the Tower of Victory as well. So, going to be getting that plus 15% attack speed. We see this landmark has, in fact, been nerfed. This used to be 20%. It is now only 15%. But it does seem like Corvinus is still going to be going up with this landmark. We see having to move away from those berries now. Vortex, on the other hand. We see no age up coming through. Going to be coming through very, very shortly. Is it going to be the Silver Tree? Despite being nerfed in two ways. Let's have a look. See what he's going to be going with. It's not. It's going to be the deer stones. So despite having good trade posts on this map, he's not deciding to go with the with the silver tree. Going with the deer stones instead. So for those wondering, trade's been changed in two ways for the Mongols. The silver tree provides less of a discount on the gold. It's now 40%. It used to be 50%. And also trade's been changed to where it now delivers gold from both directions. It's just halved. 
So basically, if you wanted to do the trade trick before, that's no longer a thing. Which means, basically, you can't do the fast castle trade with the Mongols anymore. Which I think, which I think is good. It's still going to be decent trade. It's not like it's been completely, you know, shut off. But I don't think we'll be seeing as much, especially with the Mongols here. But we see Corbinus. He has down an, out, uh, an outpost, an archery range here. Starting to make some archers. We'll have to see if he looks to go into... Oh, is he pulling bills? I think he's just going to go in for the... Yeah, he's going for it. There's five spears sitting inside this outpost, though. He's going to be losing some bills for this. We see villagers. They take three hits to kill. He's going to be pulling them back, though. Almost getting the heal off. I mean, it's smart out of Corvinus here, but I think he's still going to be losing a lot of bills. We see two bills going down. That outpost goes down. Archer's going to be focusing down the spears. Not as much damage as I initially thought. He does have textiles in. So, yeah, not the worst there for Corvinus. But you are two bills down. And that will start to scale if you're if you're not careful. So Corvinus, you know, maybe he starts to think about doing a little bit of raiding. Maybe he can get down a stable. Start to uh, think about putting some pressure on his. Look at this. We've got... Oh, it, it says Lancers. They haven't fixed this yet. Double production still says Lancers. Whereas the, the single unit is called the Keshek. So he is, in fact, double producing the brand new unit here, the Keshek. 120 food, 80 gold per per Keshek, and then 200 there for the double production. So, have a look at this. So, this unit is extremely, extremely good. 15 attack, 145 HP, 3 defensive armor for melee and ranged, which is huge. You know, th this is a really, really strong tanky unit compared to, you know, your horsemen, which the Mongols still do still have access to. But what's super huge about this unit is that it has a life steal. So for those that didn't see the pop, we, we've already seen this unit. It hasn't been changed since then, but it does have a life steal, which is absolutely bonkers. We see Vortex going to be trying to go in for a little bit of an attack here. Going to be losing a couple of spears if he's not careful. Keshuk going to be retreating back for the time being. And Corvinus is just going to be looking to wall up now. Corvinus, I think, is in a little bit of a tough spot here. He's got down a barracks and an archery range. He's got plenty of resources in the base here. But I think the problem for him is, where is he building this advantage, right? We usually see the Delhi look to move out for the sacred site. And there it is. The wild man stalks the land. Is he spawning in the same spot as last time? Yeah, there, there he is. There he is. Okay. We'll have to see who looks to move out. I assume it would be Vortex. Yeah, there, it, there he goes. He's heading over now. He's going to give... Uh, oh, maybe not. Hmm. I don't, I'm not sure if Vortex knows about it. We see there, Corvin is going to be moving out for it as well. Look at that. He's sending the village. He's sending the army. And Vortex, he's, he's walked straight past it. It looks like Corvin is going to get here before. So that is actually going to be able to even up the villager count right here. So this villager, it's worth one. It's now going to be worth four with the wild man. Which means Corvinus is actually going to be ahead in economy now. But Vortex is here with the Keshix. Corvinus only has a couple of spears here. Is he going to be able to get the buff? He's getting the buff. The wild man buffing up that villager. Is the villager going to be able to survive getting home though? There it is. The buff comes in. There it is. Plus 300%. Vortex is rushing the villager. Corvinus doesn't have any other units to protect it. No. Oh, he's got more spears. He's got more spears. Does he survive? Does he survive? 15 HP, one more hit away. Vortex is going to be committing to it. A huge value for him. He just took out the equivalent of four villagers right there. With the brand new Mongol Keshek. With the lifesteal. Oh, crazy, crazy stuff right there. That, that could have been huge for Corvinus right there. Because he would be up to... 33 villagers at the moment if he kept that one alive which you know you'd be matching you'd be actually one villager ahead of uh, vortex as you see here corvin is going to be losing out on an archer not a big deal but so it seems like vortex is just playing on one base just sort of both players going all in feudal age here which makes sense for the the delhi a little bit more because they're wanting to capture up sacred sites and it does look like Corvinus is now going to be picking up his first sacred site. Feels a little bit late, though. We're at the, the six-minute mark already. 
Patrick's going to be running in here. Corvus is going to be able to get the walls up in time, though. The nice position for him here. This map's really nice for the Delhi. Just because of these sacred sites in the corners. Going to be a little bit tricky for him to grab this one and the center one. As we see Vortex, he's got a tower here. He's got a, the deer stones. Plenty of arches as well. So, you know, at least Vortex... Oh, well, at least uh, Corvinus does have the one sacred site. But have a look at this. Oh, yes. We've got the Guzzy Raider. It's here. It's being produced super fast with the Scholar setting aside at the stable. There it is. 110 food, 30 wood. So it costs a little bit more than just your regular old horseman. Let me see here. Corvinus is going to be taking this fight. Now, this Guzzy Raider is actually a counter to the Keshek. Because the Keshek is a heavily armored unit. And Guzzy Raiders, they counter heavily armored units. And Corvinus is actually losing out on a couple of bills right there. Definitely feels bad. But he's got the Guzzy Raider now. And this is going to counter out all of the Kesheks. Because they've got the little the little mace. You see their counters uh, highly armored units. And we see Corvinus is more than happy to take this fight. Vortex, he has no spears in here whatsoever. He's He has nothing to counter the Guzzy Raider. He needs to make some spears of his own. As we do see there, the first spearman in the queue. But Corvinus is in a great position with this Guzzy Raider. That is absolutely crazy. This unit counters everything that Vortex has right here. And Corvinus is more than happy to take this fight. We see archers still supporting the fight here. Needs to be focusing down the uh, the archers with, with those. While the Guzzy Raiders can focus down the, the Keshuks. Keshuks do have the life steal, so they're going to be taking a little bit of health away. And they do have the, the slight more damage. But you got the bonus damage here. Look at the damage coming through from this Guzzy Raider onto the Keshuk. It is absolutely crazy. Now, Corvinus is going to be fighting underneath the tower, so they're going to be taking a little bit more damage, but Corvinus is just pumping out these Guzzy Raiders. This is absolutely wild. Look at the damage coming through. That is that is wild damage right there. I mean, Vortex has some spears in here now, so not a great fight for Corvinus. Loses out on a couple more of those Raiders, and now the Kashuk is going to be able to start to focus down on some of these archers. But Corvinus took a pretty decent fight. And you've got to remember how expensive these Keshiks are. These are not cheap units. Have a look at the price. 80 gold, 120 food. Whereas for the, the Guzzy Raider, it's only 110 food, 30 wood. So it's really, really cheap here. But Corvinus is going to get pushed back into the base. Going to, be going to be able to get a nice little charge on. Corvinus is pushed back into the base now. He's got the one sacred site. So that's going to make up for the economic difference that these players have. If you're Corvinus, I think you just send, like, maybe a spear down here with a with a scholar. And just get up the walls and take the sacred site. Because I don't think Vortex is really paying too much attention over there. But Corvinus now looking to add in the 1-1-1 one, one, one composition. We see he's got the stable, he's got the archery range, he's got the, the barracks. Adding in a little bit of everything right here. But I'd love to see a second stable here. Just pump out these guys. Because you really want to stop any sort of Keshiks from, from Vortex here. Because these are strong units. We talked about this in the pop. How strong this unit is. And pretty much all of the cavalry that's been updated in this season has been massively buffed. Like, they're, they're kind of crazy. you got the, the Spahi. That's kind of crazy with the range. The Keshek's kind of crazy with the lifesteal. And then you got the Guzzy Raider, which is kind of crazy up against heavily armored units. But I, I think I like it, though. I, I definitely like the idea that... Delhi have a, something that that can counter heavily armored units in the feudal age. Something they struggled a little bit against in, in previous seasons. But Vortex, he's aging up now. Look at this. We've got the step route coming through for him. Corvinus looks like he might be going towards a castle age of his own. So not gonna be you know, he's not gonna be struggling here. Got the sacred site popping in some gold. Also has 10 villagers on the gold as well. So yeah, shouldn't be too long now. Till he gets that age up through. But I'm wondering, how would the Delhi do in a matchup like the French? Where the French are more than happy to play it out in the, the Feudal Age. Just because they've got the knights, right? They've got the knights. They've got the extra passive uh, TC production speed. Which is pretty huge for them. That's why they can sort of play it out in the Feudal Age. But I'm wondering how this is going to do for the Delhi. Are the Delhi going to be able to stick it out in the, the Feudal Age now because of this unit? Because this is a great unit to counter heavily armored units. That's usually why we have to see age-ups coming through for civilizations like the Delhi. Just so they have something to counter 
lancers, men at arms. That, that is, well, it's obviously not the only reason, but it, it's a big reason because feudal age units just not a good unit up against heavily armored units. So we'll have to see how this changes here with the Agazi Raider. Vortex is going to be able to start to siege us down. Veterancy, Keshex, RM. We see the life steal coming through for them. Look at that life steal coming through while burning down buildings. That is absolutely wild. Corvinus gets that sacred site up. Compounder the Defender coming through for him. And we see Corvinus is going to be taking this fight here. He has the Guzzy Raiders, but we see Vortex has a few spears in there. Is this a fight that Corvinus can actually take here? It seems like it is. That is absolutely bonkers. This unit is, is crazy. How? He's got veterancy upgrades in with a lifesteal, and Corvinus can take this fight with the Guzzy Raiders. What is this unit? That is absolutely crazy. And Corvinus looking in a great spot now. Two sacred sites up. He's about to have the age up come through here. Villagers getting taken out there for Vortex. He loses two. Corvinus really starting to equalize the villager count, and he's got the two sacred sites behind this. He's going to be losing out on his army now with all of those reinforcements coming through as well as the veterans, the archers. But that was a great fight for him considering how much value Vortex lost from those Keshiks. There it is. Compounder the Defender is up. Corvinus needs to select the upgrades. Very important you do this. He hasn't, he hasn't queued up any of the upgrades yet. Needs to do that. He's queued up the important upgrades, though. We see Veterancy Spears coming in, as well as some of his Blacksmith upgrades. But, yeah, Volkorvanus, please. Please don't do this to us. You you used to be a Delhi main back in the day. This used to be Corvinus's main civilization here. With all of these upgrades. And there, there we go. Finally coming in. Village Fortress is going to be the first one there. So Corvinus now going to be going into some Lancers. So it seems like he's stopped production for the time being with Guzzy Raiders. He's making crossbow. He's making Lancers. Vortex. He's still making Keshex. That is wild. So they don't actually have access to the Lance anymore. I'd, I'd be really interested to see what players would look to go for. Whether they choose the Keshek or the Lancer now in age 3. Because the Keshek is quite a bit cheaper than your Lancer. It, well, I say quite a bit. It's only 40 resources, 20 gold, 20 food. But I wonder which is the better unit. I wonder if we can mod that. I, I'd love to see. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Farman used to do these. Uh, well, I guess we can actually still do it. But Farman used to do these videos where it's like 100 Lancers versus 100, I don't know, Horsemen. I'd love to see 100 Mongol Keshiks versus 100 Mongol Lancers. But I guess we can just substitute the lan the Mongol bit for a different sieve, right? 100 Keshiks versus 100... Delhi Lancers, which I mean, we might actually see here, but um, you know, I'd love to see a comparison on that, see which which actually does better. Maybe we'll see an Agent Noob video on that soon, who knows? But looks like Vortex now going to be going in for the charge here. We see some arrow coming through the defensive arrow, giving an extra bit of armor right there. And Corvinus, he's under a bit of pressure here. We see Vortex, he's got through some crossbow in here, which are going to be able to perfectly counter out these Lancers. But the Lancers coming in from behind. Going to be able to catch Vortex off guard here. Going to be taking out a lot of these crossbow. The units that Vortex need alive here. And Corvinus. Looks like that Sacred Sight did get denied away from him. Vortex looks like he's going to be able to... Is, can he take this fight? Let's see. This is going to be a really good indicator to us to see how good these Keshiks are. Because we've got some crossbow on the back line. We've got quite a few crossbow, in fact. I don't think this is a good fight here for Corvinus. He's diving the crossbow, but he's losing out on so much health on his uh, on his lances. And, and the Keshiks, look, they're just healing up. They're more than happy to deal damage. There's some Wallalo going to be coming off here on the Sacred Site. Going to be trying to convert the Scholar. Little does he know, Scholars don't get converted. He probably did know that, but, you know, just going for the Wallalo nonetheless. And Vortex... We see he wins this fight. Corvin is now in a rough position when it comes to his numbers. Threw away a huge amount of his of his units. And Vortex behind us. He's still happy to sit on the 1TC here. This is something that the Mongols are more than happy to do. They've got the step right out in here, giving the extra drop-off. Vortex also capturing up the sacred sites behind this and the relics. We see one relic coming in here for Corvinus. Two already in the bank for Vortex. He's going to be able to pick this one up as well. And possibly even this one. Uh, we'll have to see. I think he's going to be able to pick it up before uh, before Corvinus. 
So Vortex actually looking in a really good spot. I mean, sure, he has one sacred site, but Vortex, you know, he's about to have four relics in the bank. He's he can also capture up these two sacred sites. He's got the step out. He's just gonna have to pump out these Keshiks. And I think Corvinus is gonna find it very tricky here. He needs to somehow find a way to to stay in this with village fortresses, right? You wanna mine a ton of stone, just spam out the keeps all over the map, and try and build a good villager lead. No way. No way. Okay, Corvinus, he does realize it. There we go. Gonna be taking that one out. There we do. See, Vortex has four relics. I, I assume he knows about this one, right? Yeah, it does. But Vortex looks like he's going in for yet another push. No siege out on the field from him. Just going in pure with the army. We see plenty of Kashyyyks. I'm sure they'll be making their way around to the back of the base here. Plenty of spears to deal with all of the cavalry here from Corvinus. And they're just going to get obliterated. Corvinus, he's still making lances here, but lances just going to get obliterated by everything Vortex has right here. The mass of crossbowmen looking pretty huge for him. Nice micro coming out from Vortex here as well. Khan also does arrive, so it's going to be making its way back over here. Going to be able to give a nice little buff to these units. Vortex did lose quite a few spears here, but he's taken out a load of valuable units here from, from Corvinus. Corvinus is now looking to dive this army. We see plenty of units coming out for him. But it looks like Vortex is... I think he's just kiting at the moment. This, this is still good trades for him. We see taking out so many lances. It's huge value for him. But Vortex with still lots of Keshiks on the way. Needs to be careful not to engage onto too many crossbow. And we're just in here. Vortex. He's taking out all of those heavily armored units. The things that cost a lot for Corvinus here. Army value still sitting pretty even here. It does some, it seem like Vortex does have to retreat back now. As we see more Guzzy Raiders are on the way now for Corvinus. I think I think Guzzy Raiders here is the better choice up against Crossbow. Because they're they're not a heavily armored unit, which means they can counter the crossbow. And they still counter the, the Keshuk. So I, I think I prefer the Guzzy Raider here over the Lancer. And we see that's actually kind of working out for him. Corvinus is now taking the army value by around 500. And he's made some good some good ground here. Village Fortresses also comes in. Which means Corvinus, he's now, now not going to be too far away from the, the ability to drop down a keep. I wouldn't be surprised to see villagers getting pulled here. And he tries and sticks it near this sacred site. You won't be able to place it directly on here because of the, the fish. But just placing it even here is going to be huge for him. But it seems like both players retreating back to their base. Corvinus is going for that kick. He can actually place it right here. Have a look at this. Really, really nice spot. I'm very surprised he can place it here because of the uh, the fish. But I, I, I guess it's possible. It's a really, really nice position here for Corvinus if he can get it up. 19 villagers on the way. Vortex. He's still got quite a mass. But I think Corvinus, he's got enough of a defensive force here to the point where he should be able to hold this. And even if he doesn't have the right army, the villagers should get this up in time. The Vortex. I'm not sure what he's doing here with this uh, Shaman, but it's going to get taken out. And it looks like this keep is going to be going up very, very easily here for Corvinus. So he's actually looking in a decent spot. We see same economic count. Corvinus is going to have two sacred sites up. Vortex still only has three relics in the bank. Doesn't have this, uh, this fourth one yet. So honestly, Corvinus is looking in a really, really good spot now, especially with village, village fortresses in, to where he can now train villagers from keeps. So honestly, I think Corvinus is in a great spot. We see he's got plenty of these Guzzy Raiders, plenty of crossbow out on the field, plenty of spears still, and now he's going to be capturing that second sacred site. The Vortex, he's looking to dive. Yeah, and you're not going to be happy about what you're about to see. There it is. He spots the keep. And he realizes, and he has to fall back. I'd also love to see Corvinus just rush up this wall. You know, just finish this up. Let me see. Corvinus going for yet another keep. Did lose quite a few villagers. Look at that. Quite a few villagers going down. Not the biggest of deals. They're so going to be able to replace them pretty quickly. Corvinus, he's got plenty of food available to him. Look at all, the, all of the shoreline fish here. So plenty of food in the middle here. As through all of the upgrades from... Uh, 
from the mill that he needs for the fish as well. So honestly, Corvin is looking in a really, really good spot, especially with the fact he's on effectively three TCs and two sacred sites. It seems like Vortex now going into Horseman. So Horseman... Okay, this is what we need to see as well. Guzzy Raiders versus Horseman. What is the better unit? I'd assume that the Horseman are slightly more cost effective just because, you know, the Guzzy Raiders, they specialize in dealing damage against heavily armored units and that's why you pay more for them. So I think cost for cost equivalent, I think that the, the Horsemen win. But in even numbers, I think it's an even fight. So we'll have to see. I, uh, I'm sure someone is planning on making a video like that. But look at this. Vortex now building double traction trebuchet. And we're starting to siege down the keep. But Vortex. He's starting to fall behind here. He needs something going for him. We see Horseman going to be, be able to start to siege down some of the walls here. Corvinus could honestly just rush up a couple outposts, I think, and just try and keep this alive with some of the builds. Uh, or he could just leave it, to be honest. Uh, you know, just recapture it a little bit later on. Triple traction trebuchet down for Vortex. This keep under a lot of pressure. Doesn't seem like Corvinus is wanting to repair this one up. Which is a little bit curious. He's got a bit of stone in the bank to do so, but... Maybe he's just waiting. Yeah, okay, so he's got Springles on the way, but we see Vortex one step ahead of the game. Already has some Springles out on the field. Raid now going off absolutely everywhere. Horseman in the base of Corvinus. How did, that, how did they get in? Oh, there's a little bit of a gap here, it seems. Horseman should be able to get cleaned up there. No Lancer, so yeah, I should be able to be cleaned up pretty easily. But now Corvinus... Needs to be careful. Double sprangled out here for Vortex. Needs to wait for that Siege Workshop to pump out these sprangles. They are being produced a little bit faster with the Scholar in there. But now Corvinus, he's ready to go in for the push. We got 16 Guzzy Raiders. But <laughs> look at the spears. We got 25 spears here from Vortex. That's a lot of spears. And we see those Guzzy Raiders. They just got obliterated. Sprangled versus Sprangled Wars. Looks like Vortex did come ahead there. Corvinus is going to be taking this fight here, but Vortex, look at the army value. He's 2,000 army value ahead right now. He's got the, the, the horseman running in on the back line here as well. That keep going to get taken out. Corvinus has no stone to keep this one alive. And there it goes. He's going to have to retreat back. He's now going to be struggling for food, it seems. He just bought a ton of stone. Look at that. Is he going for another keep here? No way is Corvinus going for another keep here. We see more raids going off as well. Horseman still in the base. Corvinus, he's lost so much ego. He's got villagers onto the units here. What is going on, Corvinus? What is going on? He's lost his, his sacred site up to the north. He's got raids going on everywhere in the base right now. He's fighting with a ton of eco. He's getting up another keep, but I don't see this one going up. And we see it gets... It, get, it does get cancelled. Okay, I, I thought he uh, lost it there, but he still has the resources in the bank. But Corvinus, he's under a lot of pressure now. Vortex, we see up by over double the army value. Corvinus also throwing away a Manganel right here. Corvinus in a tough spot. We see so much raiding going on right now. Vortex is ahead when it comes to the economy once again, despite only being on the one town center. Oh, this feels bad for Corvinus. He was in such a good spot like five minutes ago. He just took a took a pretty terrible fight. I think he just needed more Springles, honestly. I think Springles was the big downfall here. Because as long as you keep your 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 keep alive, I think you hold that position fine. Because you can always garrison your builds inside that keep, and that, that'll be huge value for you, right? But seems like Corvinus for the time being is managing to hold on here, but Vortex, he's gonna be ready for a round number two here. As soon as he cleans up this production. He's going to have more traction trebuchets on the way. And look at this. We've even got outposts coming down with springles here for Vortex. This is a point in the this is a point in the game that you do not want to come to up against the Mongols. Where they're building outposts like this. With a, a traction trebuchets coming down as well. And the thing is for Vortex, or for Corvinus, sorry. He can't see past his stealth forest. Which means it's going to be extremely hard for him to springle the wall with this. And with that, GG gets called. Corvinus realizes... 
He's not going to be able to hold on here with Vortex's plan on the front line here. So GG gets called. If you did enjoy this game, please do feel free to leave a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.